What's up, Capcom Unity? We're here at Game & Collectibles booth at PAX Prime, obviously full of a lot of old classic stuff from days gone by. We're going to take a quick tour around and try to find what the most expensive and oldest and just generally rarest, sort of rarest game we can find in the booth just to see what's kind of endured over the years. And we also asked you guys on Twitter to try to guess as well. We gave a hashtag out, and if anyone actually guessed the right one, we're actually going to buy the game for you. And if no one guesses it, we'll still figure something out. So let's hop in and take a look. Taking a quick stroll past the NES wall, and you'll see some old Capcom classics here. we got Section Z moving down, kind of kicked off our Disney love with Mickey Mouse Capade. And if you come way down here, very bottom of the road is, is a codename Viper. I don't know if you remember that one, but it's actually pretty cool. And then, of course, the more complete they are, the more rare they are, which is hard to find because most of us were really young, and they didn't take care of their games. So they have, like, ripped manuals, broken cases, scratched up discs, and now they want them back, but they want them in better shape. We do have Street Fighter II collection on PlayStation, which seems to go for around 40 bucks, which is pretty nice. Uh, Captain Commando. I mean, I found on the bottom shelf, I found uh, Rockman 2. Capcom vs. SNK for the Dreamcast. And then you also have the Cannon Spike which also on the Dreamcast, not a lot of people bought this game and they didn't put it on anything else at the time. So now that people are trying to find it and want it, the Dreamcast version of Cannon Spike is where it's at. Giga Wing's probably the most expensive Capcom game we got at the moment. Like that and Captain Commando are like charging yeah, yeah, the same amount. Too, yeah. It's like a Dreamcast launch era kind of shooter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a lot of people didn't know about and shmups have become popular again. There's like a big resurgence with those. You know, th these older games like this, it doesn't really matter if it's like the new day graphics or old day graphics or anything like that. It's all about the gameplay. And people produced really good games like Giga Wing back then that had a fantastic gameplay. Oh yeah, I forgot this is even in there. 110, so it's Ten dollars more expensive than the other games, but this guy's beating all you Capcom fans to it. Uh, so I'm taking your Final Fight fan. Yeah, uh, it's got two uh, original characters in it. It's got lots of branching paths. It's pretty fun. It's like kind of easy, but you know. <laughs> yeah, we we're gonna have a contest, but it looks like you're walking out with it. <laughs> all right. So the purpose of that was to find the rarest, the most expensive game in there, and it turns out Final Fight Tough was it, and someone bought it, not scripted or planned at all, like sheerly by random chance. Uh, so let's check our Twitter account, see if any of you guys guessed any of the games we found. And if we did, we're going to pick them up for you. People. So even though no one got exactly what was actually available and could be bought, we wanted to give people something. So um, Ortiz4391 said PS2 MVC2. And while that's not the PS2 version, we do from off camera, we did pick up the Japanese version of the Dreamcast Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which is cool because, you know, it's a different art. I love this art anyway. So. We'll get that out to you. And also one of the popular ones we saw guests was DuckTales 2 and Rescue Rangers 2. Both the, both very rare NES games, and while again they were not there, we didn't want him to leave empty-handed, so Mechanical Grape, who guessed DuckTales 2 first, we did pick up the cons consolation prize of Mickey Mouse Capade for NES. Kind of the introduction of Capcom Disney love way back in the NES days. Uh, not quite DuckTales 2, but again, it's something. It was what we had. Uh, Relina Hernandez guessed Resident Evil, and while there were many Resident Evil games there, um, we thought it was kind of neat to see the original PS1 long box version, uh, which was the first way it was ever available. Um, and actually when the PS1 launched, they were in cases similar to Sega CD and Saturn. Again, a nice little piece of uh, Capcom history. Thank you for playing. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.